time to practice. But before we do, let's go over the step-by-step -step process you need to do when you're evaluating an argument. Step one, identify the claim. Remember, the claim is the main point that the author is making regarding their issue they're talking about. Outline the reason. Remember, the reason is going to be why they feel their claim is, support, is important. So it's pretty much going to back up and support the claim. Test the evidence. Remember, the evidence is what they use to further support their claim. Evidence typically is going to support the reasons they give. And remember, we always want to use RSR. Is it relevant? Is it sufficient enough? And is it reasonable enough? The next thing we want to do is check those emotions. What leading words are they using? What means of persuasion are they using to persuade us to their POV or their point of view? Are they using logos, meaning they're using our logic, our common sense, what we feel is right, what we feel is wrong, what we already know? Are they using ethos, meaning they're going on their reputation, their truthfulness, their authenticity, their authority, who they are? Or are they using pathos, meaning they're trying to tug at our emotional heartstrings. They're trying to pull us in emotionally. So we want to always check those emotions. And lastly, we want to check for the counters. A very good sound argument is always, always, always going to give the opposing views side so that they want to make the opposing view side weaker, making their side of the argument stronger. So let's look at an example. I think the school's decision to change our dress code to uniforms will hurt students more to help them. Let's stop right there. Automatically, we see we have the issue. What's our issue? The school is deciding to change the dress code to uniforms. So that's our issue. School uniforms. All right, now, what claim or argument is the author saying? It's right here in the first sentence. I think the school's decision to change our dress codes uniforms will hurt students more than help them. So that is their claim. Now they gotta give us reasons why. Just like a good reader-writer conversation, as the reader, we're gonna say, well, why do you feel that way? All right, so we should see reason number one. Even though school officials and parents argue that uniforms will help us focus more on our studies, this may not actually be the case. So the first reason why it's going to hurt is that it may not help them focus more on their studies. In a survey I did of 100 students from all three grades, only six thought that wearing a uniform would help them make better grades. Now here we see where this author has tried to use a survey, which you would think would be some type of factual verifiable piece of evidence. But only six answer. And also it's a survey that the author themselves created. And then we also have to look at, does it really support reason number one? Will help us focus on our studies. That piece of, that piece of evidence is, does not, when you test it with RSR, does not really back up this reason. So this author may has already have a weakened argument. Let's see if we can find reason number two. On top of that, our school already receives above average ranking on statewide tests. All right, so she's saying also that another reason why it could, it do, we don't need it, it may hurt us more, is that we already receive above ranking standards. Uh, does that really support the argument that it'll help us focus more on our studies. She's saying we don't need uniforms to focus more, more on our studies because we already get good um, state test scores. So when you test it up with RSR, relevant, sufficient, and reasonable, it's a lot better than this survey. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at our second reason. In our school, individual accomplishment, not conformity, is encouraged. Both our spelling bee champ and our basketball star player were congratulated at a recent school assembly. In addition, part of our school curriculum is celebrating diversity. How can the school encourage us to be individuals and celebrate diversity on one hand, but at the same time tell us what to wear 
every single day. All right. So the other reason why she feels uniforms will hurt students more than help them is that individual accomplishment is what's encouraged, not conformity. So what are her re what that's the second reason? Let's look at some evidence. Evidence piece number one. The spelling bee champ and the star basketball player were congratulated. So she gave a typically a non uh, a non athletic example and then an athletic example. Then she gives the school curriculum is about celebrating diversity. What she's saying here in her argument: How can the school encourage us to be individuals and celebrate diversity on the one hand, but at the same time tell us what to wear every single school day? So let's check it with RSR. So is this relevant? Individual accomplishment. She gives examples of individual comp accomplishment. That's definitely relevant. Is it sufficient? Yes, I would say so. Is it reasonable? Yes. This part right here, excellent. Where well, she's excellently supporting her reasons. And that goes back to supporting her claim. Then there's a question for the counter. So this is the first time we hear and see her giving some type of counter. How can the school encourage us to be individuals and celebrate diversity on the one hand, but at the same time tell us what to wear every single school day? All right, let's see what else we got. Also, the uniforms are just plain uncomfortable and not very practical. Now, this is the first time that we see clear opinions that she's trying to pass off as reasons and evidence. So she's saying her next reason is, so we have reason number one, reason number two, reason number three, and now we have reason number four. Also, the uniforms are just plain uncomfortable and not very practical. The girls who have to wear skirts will be unnecessarily cold in the winter. The boys have to wear towels and waste time every morning just trying to tie them right. This whole paragraph is opinion and it's bias. This is, now, so is it relevant? Yes, it's relevant to the argument, but then you're going to get stuck on the F, S. Is it sufficient? Is it sufficient to prove her claim that it will hurt students more than help them? <coughs> Excuse me. At the end of the day, Girls having to wear skirts in the cold, will that hurt them more than help them? That's a toss-up. That's an opinion. You have to, that's an opinion type question. Will boys having to wear ties and that wastes their time, will that hurt them more than help them? Once again, that's not sufficient enough of an argument. And it's not really reasonable enough. She needs some more factual and data. So, these right here do not cut the mustard as far as it's RSR. So, so far we have one good piece of reason and evidence that the author has to support her argument. Let's look at the next one. And let's face it, uniforms cost a lot of money. Now here we see a reason, but she doesn't give any evidence. So, we got to cross this one out. All right, let's look at this next section. The students of Thomas Jefferson Middle School should be able to have a say in what they wear every day, just like they have for 20 years. Tell your teacher, talk to your parents, write a letter to the principal, and sign a petition. Now, now we're down to checking for the emotions. Right here, she's clearly trying to incense or motivate and charge the reader of this. Tell your teacher, talk to your parents, write a letter to the principal, sign a permission. She is clearly using pathos for her argument. So that's one emotion that she's trying to use. How can the school encourage us to be individuals and celebrate diversity on the one hand, but at the same time, tell us what to wear to school every single day? Once again, I printed this out because I really want you to see this was probably her best use of the counter argument. So, the next step is step four. Check our emotions. And as you can see, she has pathos right there. Now, this right here, she's also, this right here, she's using a little, she's trying to use logos. 
And then the last step, check five, check for counters. As we already said, this was her only example of where she had a counter argument. So now we've identified everything. So now we have to decide, is her argument strong? Well, based on what she gave us, her argument is her argument and claim is not sufficiently supported based on the evidence. So overall, she's given a rather weak argument. What would you say she'd need? She'd need more facts, statistics that are verifiable. Remember, the only statistics she gave was a survey that she gave, and she said only six students thought that. However, we can, how can we go back and verify those six, those six students? Now, you've seen me work through an argument. Now it's time for you to try. Good luck. <laughs>